Hello, friends. It's that time again. It's time for Boot Room, looking ahead to Ipswich Town's game this weekend. And it feels like a big game this weekend, just down the road at Cambridge United. I'm Mark Heath, joined by Stuart Watson this week to break down this game. But before we get into the game, Stewie, Town have made a couple more signings, not on pitch signings, but in the in the uh, behind the scenes, shall we say. A couple of new faces added to the backroom staff, as it were. Um, can you bring people up to speed on that before we talk about the game? Yes, uh, Peter Reid, who... We reported on earlier in the week, they were in talks with him about a consultancy role. He has now formally taken on that role. Um, I guess people will know him best from his time as Sunderland manager, depending on how far you go back. Older fans will remember him being an in England international and Everton legend in, in the 80s. Um, and he was uh, working with Paul Cook at Wigan. So he's reunited with, with Paul Cook and he will be just somebody, I think, from what I gather, will be uh, a bit of an eye in the sky, someone who sits up in the stands and watches the game from, from another angle and can bring uh, just a, a, another view to things and just, just help Paul Cook. So um, Mark Ashton's always said that the uh, the more hands and the more, more experience they've got, the better. And they're certainly adding to them at the moment. Mm. Cheer up Peter Reid is what I remember him for, that song when uh, Sunderland were heading for promotion. As you say, certainly an experienced face to add to the team and another new face as well um, with another new title, Stewie. Yes, uh, this is Gary Probert. So another another member of the Bristol City backroom team that's followed Ashton across. Um, they've already got Andy Rawls, Andy Costin, Luke Verhan that have come across uh, from Bristol City. Now we've got Gary Probert as well. His role is going to be Director of Football Operations. So he's going to be overseeing uh, the academy as a whole, as well as recruitment. It's quite a wide ranging role. His role at Bristol City was was the sort of head of academy. So Bristol mm. City have had some success at under, under 23s and under 18s level in recent years. They've had players like Lloyd Kelly, Bobby Reid, Joe Bryan that have gone on to make some big money moves to, to Premier League clubs. So, um, yes, that infrastructure that Mark Ashton talked about beefing up from day one is is uh, getting getting bigger still. He's not messing around, is he? Bringing a lot of his old mates across. Anyway, so that's two new signings off the pitch. Let's talk about on the pitch tomorrow, Stu. I've said already it feels like a big game at Cambridge United, and it really does, not just because Town are taking 2,500 fans just down the A14 to Cambridge, but also because this is an opportunity to really put another marker down make it three wins in a row in all competitions and get some momentum going into some some big games coming up. Pompey, obviously, next week. And then they also play the current top two in this next little stretch of games. So how are you feeling about this one um, at the Abbey Stadium tomorrow? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. First and foremost, we've been to, to the Abbey a few times for pre-season games. It's a nice place to go and walk, watch football. Fair bit mm. of charm there. It's going to be a really good atmosphere, as you say, with two and a half thousand Ipswich fans packing the away end. I'm sure a few more might have sneaked into the home end as well. It's a, it's a sellout crowd there of, what is it, uh, nearly 8,000 capacity, I think it is, at, at Cambridge. So looking forward to that. First time they've the two clubs have faced each other in a competitive fixture since 1993. Um, Cambridge have made a, a fairly decent start following, following promotion. They've had... Um, Big win against Portsmouth. They've beaten Bolton and Burton, who obviously Ipswich lost to both of, of those. And, and the two clubs sit on level points mm. in the table. And as, as you rightly said, Ipswich need to get some momentum going now. They've um, yet to beat anyone of note in this division so far. And we're excited that things are still are starting to come together for Ipswich. But we, we thought that, didn't we, after the uh, the Doncaster game and Accrington mm. was a real down to earth with a bump moment. So they, they can't afford to have any more of these kind of two steps back situations at switch because uh, before you know it, we're going to be right into the meat of this season. Mm. And you spoke to Paul Cook this morning, as you normally do on a Friday. Um, he was uh, glowing in 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 uh, kind of praise of town's support. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that and a bit more about what you said about the trip to Cambridge tomorrow? Yeah, just asked him about he obviously knew Ipswich Town was a, a massive football club when he came here, of course, but I just asked him whether maybe the size of the support and how much Ipswich fans travel in their numbers had, had maybe surprised him a little bit. And, and he admitted, yes, it, it probably had. Gary Roberts, obviously a former Ipswich player, had, had told him all about, about it. But, you know, Ipswich have had 1,800 go to Lincoln. They've had, you know, they, they get 2,000 plus go 
all over the country. They had nearly mm. a thousand up at Accrington recently on, on, on you know, miles away, rank bad weather. Um, and he, he just seems to get it from a fan's point of view. This is a man that still is a football fan himself. Mm. He's still a big, passionate Liverpool fan that will go and stand and sing on the, uh, you know, amongst supporters when, when he can to go and watch Liverpool. So a lot of managers say that they see things from a fan's point of view, but with Paul Cook, I, I genuinely do believe it. And he, he really just wants to send supporters home proud and uh, none, none more though, none more so than uh, tomorrow against Cambridge. Um, he went as far as calling it a derby, which I know is a uh, split people, <laughs> um, shall we say. Um, yeah. We shall see. Uh, and obviously the big question going into every game around the game is is what Paul Cook does with the side. For, to a large extent, the side is kind of picking itself at the moment, isn't it? But there are a couple of a couple of questions. You spoke to Paul, obviously, about injuries, etc. He plays his cards very close to his chest on that front. So we don't really know about things like Coulson and Penny and, and that kind of thing. But what, what do you expect um, Town to put out on the field as a starting eleven tomorrow? Well, after two, two back-to-back wins, um, or back-to-back wins... Um, it's going to be pretty similar again. I would imagine that there's two real talking points. One is left back. Who's going to be fit? Mm-hmm. Matt Penny went off with a tight hamstring against Shrewsbury in the second half. Hayden Coulson's missed the last five games with a, with a thigh problem that he picked up at Lincoln. Um, Cook didn't really want to give anything away as usual on, on that. So it'd be mm-hmm. interesting to see which of those two is fit, if any. And, and if neither were, what he does from there. He ended up playing... Um, moving Genoa Danassian across to, to left back in the last game. And I guess Kane Vincent Young then would come in at right back would be the the, the last ditch option there. Um, and then the, the number 10 position, obviously, Bersant Salina is, is back from international duty with, with Kosovo. Uh, but in his absence, Connor Chaplin has, has taken his chance. He's got three goals in, in the last four games, going back to the, the Sheffield Wednesday match. I think he's played the number 10 position as good as anybody thus mm. far. So... I can't see him changing that, to be honest. And I, he's talked about managing the squad for this week ahead. You mentioned the Portsmouth game on Tuesday. Maybe if Bursant Salinas had a fair bit of travelling this week and, and missed a bit of training, I wouldn't be rushing to to get him back in necessarily. Mm. Um, there is one more question mark, and it's whether whether he thinks to get Carl Edwards in, who um, really excited us all when he first arrived on the scene at Ipswich. He had a little injury set back himself, a bit of a, a small groin tear. Came on in the uh, Papa John's Trophy against Gillingham. Looked a little... Uh, sorry, play, he started that game, didn't he? But looked a little bit rusty. And then he came on last weekend against Shrewsbury and looked like his electric former self. One piece of outrageous skill at the end of the game that and then driving run and big penalty appeals. Just wonder whether there might be a temptation to get him back in. If he is... Scott Fraser might be in the the amber zone, as I say. He's, um, he would be the one that I would see drop out. Yeah, you've got to play Carl Edwards, I think, if he's fit from the start. Uh, and in terms of left back, obviously, Genoi can play every position and do it all at the back there. Uh, and we know that Miles Kenlock definitely can't play Stu. We can say that with certainty because he's not in the squad, is he? So he certainly can't step in if there is an emergency situation. Um, how about the Cambridge United side? Because there's some interesting. Um, players in there, isn't there, in terms of uh, connections to town? We've got Paul Digby, former Loney. Looks like Jack Lancaster isn't going to play. And of course, there's the Ageless Wonder, formerly from down the road, Wes Houlihan, who pulls a lot of the strings for them. So, are, are there anyone particularly you're looking at for Cambridge United tomorrow in terms of causing town issues? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I don't know huge amounts about Cambridge United. Obviously, following their promotion, they lost uh, Paul Mullin, their, their top goal scorer. Obviously, went to to Wrexham, which was an, an eye catching move. Um, Noyle, their right back, who by all accounts was the best right back in in League Two last season, he went to uh, Doncaster, I think it was. So they lost some key players, but Mark Bonner seems to be a really highly rated young manager. Mm. Um, as I mentioned, they've got some some decent results so far. They seem to have handled the step up quite well. Um, Lancaster sadly looks like he's still managing those injury problems that, that have dogged him for a while. He played last week, but it sounds like he's a major doubt for this one. Mm. Houlihan just seems to have the sign over Ipswich, doesn't he? I hate to say it, but uh, you know, never lost, never lost in a derby. Don't need to remind Ipswich fans of that. And by all accounts, he's still 
their star man at the ripe old age of what is he 38 39 now 39 he is i think 39 so one one to watch there but um Ipswich have got more than enough attacking quality themselves so um looking forward to this should be good perfect segue then Stu to the final question of every boot room what's going to happen what's your prediction i've i've said i wrote a piece this week looking ahead to the next five games i said town are going to win 2-1 so i'm going to stand by that how about yourself well, obviously, hope they can win, and I think mm. they can win. But I wrote a, a five-game prediction piece many weeks ago, and it finished on this Cambridge game. And I put two-two back then, and I think I'm going to have to stick with that original prediction because Cambridge have they drew they drew two-two at Crew last weekend. They drew two-two at home to Fleetwood uh, a few weeks ago. Um, they look like they've got goals in them. They look like they mm. can concede. The same can be said of, of Ipswich at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'll go. I'll go with the Desmond two-two. So two saying draw. I'm saying win. If you want a bit more of a lowdown on Cambridge United, go and watch our Meet the Opposition video, which Ross has done with uh, one of the journalists who covers them. Really interesting stuff. Um, they have a habit apparently Cambridge of conceding early goals, Stu, uh, and Town have got a few early goals this season. So. Maybe something to look out for tomorrow. Um, that's it from us then. Enjoy the game. Follow it with us. Stu and in Ross will all be at the game. And we'll speak to you again next time.